Hi, my name is Leah Day and welcome to this free motion quilting project video. Today I am working through this painted earth that we painted in a previous video. Uh, in the green sections we painted over quilting, which is a really cool way of just showing the texture of the stitches and uh, not the stitches themselves, you cover over them. Today we're going to go back over this blue section which was covered in paint and we're going to quilt on top of it. And there's a couple different things you kind of have to keep in mind when you're quilting over painting. For one thing, uh, this was painted with uh, Jacquard Lumineer textile paints. And even though it's fabric paint, it still made the area a little stiff. And that is going to make it a little bit trickier to quilt. Another thing is every time the needle pierces the painted section, it is actually piercing it. Uh, this has covered the surface and so whenever it's quilted it's going to leave noticeable holes. So this is one situation, one of the few situations I'll tell you, you really need to be careful and you really need to stitch perfectly because you don't want to have to rip this out. Um, trust me, I've ripped out over painting and it's, a, it's really a beast. You don't want to have to do it. So when you work through this, my advice would be to take that color of paint, whatever it is, paint it over you know, a good square, like 10 inch square of fabric, and practice, practice stitching your design over that painted fabric so that way you can get some practice and get the feel for it because it feels different. It's going to feel stiffer, it's going to feel um, uh, thicker and you're going to hear your needle differently. It's going to be kind of a, a more of a, a hitting sound as the needle pierces through the paint and the fabric. So I hope that makes sense. I don't want to intimidate you from it. It's really, really fun. But you need to know going into it, this is different. And it's going to feel different. And there's always the other option of quilting first and painting over it. You're going to cover your stitches, but and it looks different. But there is always that second option. So keep that in mind. Also, keep in mind that this is really only true for Jacquard Lemonier textile paints. Shiva Paint Sticks, which is another paint that I've worked with, works entirely differently. Uh, chances are there's other paints I haven't even tried yet. They work differently, so keep in mind this is really only true for this type of paint. So let's get started. I'm going to slide this into the machine. And uh, getting back to kind of that whole thing about outlining, I'm going to go around and outline again this area because it hasn't been outlined in blue. Uh, the reason for that is uh, the back of the quilt, partly, and the reason is also I like to have a blue outline whenever I'm quilting in that blue color in that area, so that way I have something to work off of those edges. I have an outline that I can travel against whenever I need to get to another area. We're going to be filling this area with ocean currents, which is a foundational design. And that design requires a lot of travel stitching and echoing in order to get and fill the whole area. So I'm going to outline first in blue just to give myself kind of like a little fence to work around through the entire area that's going to be a nice area to travel stitch against. Okay, so drop my needle down, pull up my thread. Also the outline quilting will give you a good practice and uh, kind of get your you know, hands and feet moving in time with the quilt and uh, feeling pretty confident about stitching through the painted sections. So here we go. I'm going to really hold this down and I'm going to make very careful stitches through this area. And you can already hear the difference. You hear that kind of pocking sound? That is the needle piercing through that layer of paint. A good idea also might be to change needles right before this. So you're starting with a nice sharp needle and you're sure that it's as sharp as it possibly can be. It just came out of the package. That might be a good step. I'm rotating the quilt quite a bit. You're going to notice that. I uh, don't usually rotate this much, particularly in a tiny area like this, but when I'm working over paint, I'm like the perfectionist in me kind of comes out and I really have to slow down and work carefully through these sections. And so I do a lot more rotating and repositioning just simply because I want to be really comfortable with it. Really make sure that my hands 
uh, are in the right place at the right time and that my speed is proper so that I don't stitch wild and crazy into something that I don't want to stitch into. Of course, you're always going to end up with an angle that the quilt just really wiggles around in and you have to kind of shove it in the arm of the machine. That's okay. the control that I have um, if you're wondering about that really it's just a product of stitching so much and and you know having experience with edge stitching you will gain this with practice absolutely you will find that control but bringing your hands just a little closer to the needle certainly will help out quite a bit okay so now that we have finished outline quilting, that looks very nice, we're going to work through the entire area with a foundational design called Ocean Currents. And Ocean Currents starts with a simple wavy line that swirls into spirals. That is the foundation. We're going to set that first, and we want to make sure it's nice and open so that way we can get in there and echo it multiple times. That's the rest of the design. So here we go. I'm going to wiggle out. I'm going to plan this out just a little bit. There's my first spiral. Okay, going into the second. And they don't have to be very deep or very, you know, tight. You don't have to go around and around and around for these. That's not the purpose. It's just a general texture. And the rest of the design will really be set by that foundation. So don't get it too tight. this way. Now you might be wondering about this section over here which was not filled. I'm going to back up my camera just a little bit. Now you might be wondering about this section over here. It can be filled with this texture moving out this way and that is going to be just fine or you can wiggle over there and fill it with something if you want. Uh, I'm going to kind of just echo this area and see how that starts to build and look and then I'll make the decision about this area. So I'm going to travel stitch. So this is our foundation. A nice wiggly line with nice spirals. That's our foundation. Now the process is just echoing it. So I'm going to come up with my echo. It's really entirely up to you what scale you stitch this on. Stitching over the paint, you know, you've already got that stiffness, so adding more thread is not a problem. to do is to kind of break it up into sections that I can quilt with a single pass. So this whole thing I'm going to stitch in and fill before I move on to the other side. And that's kind of nice because it breaks it up. You're not having to move and rotate the quilt too much. You can just get in there and fill that section completely before moving on to the next section.
short little echoes can be kind of tricky, but you want to fill in that space completely and then travel stitch your way back out again. Okay, now I'm going to travel along that edge and get all the way back over to this other side. of that filled very nicely with echo quilting and you can already see that beautiful texture and here's another really cool thing about foundational designs you can actually play with colors of thread in this really really easily form your foundation and fill one half of it with echoes with one color of thread then change thread colors and fill the opposite side you're just filling with echoes it's the exact same steps but the two colors coming together creates a really, really interesting effect. I love playing with that kind of thing in the border of a quilt. I'll start the foundation and quilt through the inner part of the design with one color and then change color, maybe even matching with the, the fabric color and fill in the rest. So you're pretty much left with a really interesting swirly kind of texture through the area. Uh, and it's fully quilted, but in two different colors. So that's it for this video. I really hope that it's helped you understand how to quilt over painted fabric and how to fill that space with ocean currents. That's not the only design you can use in that area, of course. There's lots of other designs that you can play with. So definitely check out all 365, actually 380 or so, designs that I've posted to the project so far, and that's at freemotionproject.com. My name is Leah Day, and I really hope you'll give this a try and check out those videos. Until next time, let's go quilt.